What's up, y'all? Sean, to my right, your left, I got my boy Shada Spence. Today we're gonna get a little glimpse into his life, uh, a little bit about his background and upbringing, talk about some art, because you know that's what we do here. Um, as you can see, we, we both were in Paisley, but we didn't plan this. Well, not plan. It's just a drip. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, Spence is a, one hell of a dude. He has a great story. I think y'all really gonna love this. And so before we just jump into anything, give people a perspective on your life, you know, your upbringing, where you're from. Obviously, you know, we both from Jersey, yeah. whatever, but talk to us a little bit about, you know, that upbringing in Jersey, uh, most obviously Franklin, and um, how that kind of molded you. Well, I was born and raised in Franklin, New Jersey, um, small town, central Jersey. Um, my upbringing, it was like, it was, it was live, like, I had a lot of like influence around me, like, you know, my parents, my mom, she's a, she's a Vietnamese refugee from the war. Mm. My dad was born in Brooklyn, and um, they moved, they moved to New Jersey and had me um, in '95. Uh, but growing up in Franklin, it was real diverse, mm -hmm. like, especially like the public school system. Like, it wasn't like your average high school. It was like super diverse, like 40% black. 30% Hispanic, and then the rest Asian and the minority was white. So it was actually like really fun, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, um, and I had a lot of different musical influence around me. My brother and my sister, they like listened to a lot of like old school R&B, rap, hip hop, and then even rock. And then my mom and my dad would listen to a lot of like 80s music and okay. soul and shit like that. But growing up in Franklin, it was like, it was just it was just live, you know what I mean? I feel you. And it was like we grew up a lot around a lot of different shit, like club music. Mm -hmm. Everybody, club, yeah, uh, yeah, Jersey club music. Everybody was fresh. You had the Caribbeans, the Africans, you had the Spanish people. Like everybody was lit. And um, yeah, growing up in Franklin, like I, I, I just it's like my favorite place, my home. For sure. You know yeah. Saying? Shout out to F Town. Oh, Shout real. out to all, all, all the homies over there. Yeah, for real. Um, now, nah, but you had mentioned, you know. Um, and for those who know, uh, Spence gave kind of like a gem. So he's Vietnamese and Chinese, right? Yeah. How do you think that kind of played a a part into, you know, opening doors and also some of the challenges that you face? Even though you did grow up in Franklin and, and it is diverse, you know, with that heritage comes challenges. So I guess how is that your motivators and, you know, what blockers did you see? Um. Well, like, I grew up around a lot of, like, strong individuals. Like, my, my dad and my brother, they were, like, really, like, strong, like, hardworking, like, sturdy mm. men. Like, they were, they were men. So, um, you know, I just, just having that, and even my mom and my sister, they were strong women. They were creative. They were, you know what I'm saying, just naturally, just, like, I don't know what the words are, but they're just, like, they walk with God. Yeah. So that gave me a foundation already. And then just knowing like the history of, of like Vietnam and like where my grandparents are from in China, like South China, like there's a history of like war and like yes. communism and all type of crazy shit. Like even, and even the richness of the history, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was raised to like really hold Asian culture at a high regard. Okay. So like I never like looked at it as a disadvantage until I got to like the world where like I'm trying to enter a world where I'm trying to be put on with my art mm. and I'm trying to do music and I'm trying to do fashion and all type of shit like you know it's run by certain powers you know what I mean so they'll project certain things on you yeah. right but like I said I came from a strong family like my family is tight like kings and queens yeah but like. In the media, they'll try to tell an Asian person that they're weak, submissive, whatever the stereotype may be, right? Yeah. They're gonna typecast people, they're gonna stereotype people, and this is with all like this is with all ethnicities and people. But when I experienced that, it was like, damn, like I'm not used to having people feel this way about me because I'm used to the love. Mm -hmm. Like even when I went to New York for college. Like, that's when I started seeing it more because my college was the opposite of my high school. Yeah. Like, my high school was fun. It was, like, all my friends, everybody was cool. Everybody had flavor. It was a PWI, though. But it was a PWI that I went to, like, a Jesuit PWI, and it was, like, opposite. That's when I was, like, damn, like, 
I would be hooping and people would think I didn't speak English. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Like yeah. that type of shit. Yeah. And even when like I would try to hop in the cipher at Union Square, like yeah. I would I would take the train from uptown in the Bronx and go down to, to Union Square and I would be like, hopping the cipher. People would be trying to push me out and I would get mad like, hey, what the fuck you pushing me out for? Yeah. It would start a whole little thing. But like other than that, like I always looked at like who I am and like what I come from as like an advantage because like like I know I'm rare. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere I've been, like, since I was a little kid, I, I know I'm rare. I know everybody looks at me for whatever reason, good or bad. It doesn't matter. I know they're looking. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to give them something to look at, and I'm going to give them something to hear. I like that. You know what I'm saying? So if you go to Vietnam, everybody has a storefront. Like, everybody's house is a storefront. They selling something in front of their house and shit. So, you know, that might have even something to do with it. Like, you know, they they hustling. They got so to. I, that's why I was, like, coming up, I'm selling something. I'm selling Skittles. Then I'm selling T-shirts. Then I'm drawing on people's jean jackets for them. Then I'm customizing people's shirts and hoodies and shit like that. So, you know, I just, all I know is, like, make stuff and, you know what I'm saying, and give yeah. it. Just and give it to the world, to, yeah. yeah. I know that I'm a tool for God. Like, mm -hmm. I know that I'm in a position where I could, like, not only speak for people who look like me, but, like, change the, change, like, the perspective on, like, the fact that, we can work together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, cause even Asians hate on each other. Yeah. The most, you know what I'm saying? Like, North Vietnam versus South Vietnam, right? China versus China, communist. It's always a political, religious. Like Japan invading China, you know what I'm saying? China buying up land for hundreds of years from Vietnam. North like, Korea, South Korea. North Korea, South Korea. Like, it's it's all over. It, it, and a lot of cultures we hate on ourselves. So like, I think that's that's a place for me to start. Like, man. Even like Chinese people and Vietnamese people and all like we get along, but like now it's time to take that and like multiply multiply yeah. that and like to other even other people of different backgrounds, like everybody on my team is black and Asian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm literally breaking like I'm not gonna speak on it a lot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, oh like we doing this, we like I'm not gonna record myself going you donating, you know what I'm saying, donating to charities and shit. But I literally am gonna be like, all right. I'm gonna make sure I put my man's from middle school in a position before I just go and try to outsource to somebody who I don't know. Yeah. And then it's like, it just so happens that my whole staff is black Asian, you know what I'm saying? And then the cool white people too, like, cause we need the cool white people. You do. Because they got access that reason. we don't access. Exactly. They got access that we don't have access to, like, you know what I'm saying? And just like working together, like breaking bread, like building shit. And like growing up, I, I did experience like a lot of like, just discrimination and witness a lot of discrimination, like even with that like comes with the territory. Yeah, how the police the treat yeah, like how the police treat my friends, you know what I'm saying? How the police treat me compared to the white person or how the police treat my friend in a certain situation or you know what I'm saying? Like been a lot of situations like that. Even like how white people or even some Asian people too treat black people, you know what I'm saying? And vice versa. Like, like that's getting in the way of like building what we need to build. You know what I'm saying? Because all the flavor come from us. You know what I'm saying? People of the sun. Yeah. All the flavor come from us. Absolutely. The fashion, the culture, the music, the food, the seasoning. How are people going to be that bridge to have that resource? Because everybody, like, isn't, doesn't have the opportunity to be in the position you do, or you and I, or like, you know, it's a privilege. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We recognize that. You know what I'm saying? We, we had to hustle and understand the opportunities that, and we took them. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people, they don't have the, the guidance for that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what were some of the things that, that I guess, started you or put, pointed you in the right direction of, okay, from a designer and art standpoint? For example, like the X-Ray team. Yeah. Right? With, like Tiana Taylor and J.R. Smith was, was rocking that shit. Yeah. Right? And Iman Shopper, Tiana. Yeah, I mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah, like, so that was just like me just serving, serving like the community, like, I was in high school, I was in 11th grade. No, I was in 10th grade. Yeah. And I was just like customizing people with jean jackets for them for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I enjoyed it. So I was like, all right, I could do this shit easily. Let me just do How'd it. How'd you get into that? Uh, I mean, I was always in the clothes, you know what I'm saying? Like coming from Franklin, like you know the area, like, you know, we right next to New York. We on the Jordans, we on the bait, we on the yeah. Stussy, the Kid Robot, you know what I'm saying? The Hundreds, all that shit. And then like, I used to go to thrift stores and shit, and I would see like people doing do-it-yourself shit, like mm -hmm. DIY, like painting on their shirts and all type of shit. And I've always been an artist. Like my first, my first skill that I developed was like 
visual art. Okay. So that was like the start for me when I I just took bleach, painted on the painted a you know painted a skeleton on the t-shirt on a black shirt, and um, I was just like showing everybody. It was just for my friends for real. Yeah. It's, that's how always how it be. It's, it's started, for the gang. Yeah, everybody in Franklin had them. Yeah, it's for the it's for the squad for real, and that's always how it is. So. From that, it was just like, damn, like, all right, you might got something. Mm -hmm. And then I just started making, making more stuff. Like, that's always been my thing since I was a kid, just making stuff, making, I might just make a poem. Like, I was always nice at poetry and shit yeah. in school, and I might just make some shit how I'm feeling. Or I might just draw something on the fucking desk, or I might just tag some shit up in the school. Like, I was just doing random shit. But that, with the with t-shirts, the people gravitated towards that. And really, that was, like I said, just for the squad. And then everybody's like, yo, let me buy one, let me buy one. I was like, OK. And maybe I can start monetizing my skills. And like even with like design further on and music, mm -hmm. I always made sure I had a message. Because okay. I was super into like history in school and like social studies and shit like that. Because you know, like I said, we from a diverse town. And like I love everybody, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, in a town. Like I appreciate all the cultures and all the different aspects of... Trying to broaden your horizon. Yeah, I was trying to broaden my horizon. So, like, I always had, like... Like, I did a shirt. It had, um... It had, like, um... Nelson Mandela on it. You know okay. what I'm saying? And it was, like... I tried to make all my shit, like, put you on to something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I did a shirt with Rodney King on it. I did... You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of shit, but just... I was young, too. Like, 18, 19, just coming up with Which shit. It's crazy. I was like, all right, let me just... Everything I do is going to be fly. Yeah. It's going to mean something, and it's going to help something. I like you know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything, the music, the clothes, just who I am, just any position I'm in, I try to keep those key three things, like, help something, you know what I'm saying, stand for something, mean something, and, like, be fly, do it fly in the fly way. You think those values were, like, the core components of how you were able to push that to some of the celebrities or like what man, I was in I was I was on some shit like man like my brother my brother like he was a hustler for real like a go getter like he moved out before he was 18 type shit like okay. like he was on some like independent shit I want to be just like my brother mm. right my brother was hard like super hard like in the streets and everything like fly he had like I looked to my brother like that's that's an exemplary person, you know what I'm saying? That's a role model to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like from that I was like, all right, I gotta just get it by any means. Like, really like, yo, buy my shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm pulling up with the bag, with the shopping bag, with shirts in it, ready to sell you. You know what I'm saying? I'm in New York, I'm going to all the events. I'm waiting in line for hours to go to the fucking uh cruel summer album signing and shit. And I'm waiting in line hours just to get up there and give them the shirts and be like, yo, I'm next up. Yeah. Big Sean, yo, I'm next up. Push it, I'm next up. You know what I'm saying? Common was there, Tiana was there, and she wore it to the club that yeah. night. You know what I'm saying? I've and seen then, the photos. And this is when Instagram was new. Yeah, so was everybody was like, everybody was like, <laughs> yo, this shit hard. Because it was like, that's when Instagram was about the art and shit. Yeah. Like, we was posting shit we looked at. And we was like, yo, this is a cool thing. I'm posting on my gram. It's not how it is today. Like, yeah, everything's man, about, it, you know what I'm saying? Selling your personal yeah. image and shit like that. But that was like a golden era for me because it was like, damn, I'm going to use Instagram as a tool to sell my shit. And I was getting, like, that was my first product. I'm getting sales from overseas and shit just from the internet. I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah. honestly, growing up, a lot of people are scared to, or they think it has a, a bad connotation for you to be like, yo, buy my shit. Yeah. Like, that's how you really get really. your shit out of there. Because at the end of the day, you could get, a, like, 99 no's, but that one yes could really just turn your whole shit around. Yeah, you got to have, like, supreme confidence in your shit, in your product. If, especially, like, if you put your time and your energy into it. Like, if your time and energy into the product design is here, mm -hmm. your selling energy got to be the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't just have it and then just be like, oh, whoever likes it. You know, yeah. Like, nah, you got to match the energy. Because I remember even with music, like, people was like, you doing music now? It's like, that's not enough to, like, to, to convince people just to say I'm about to do music or yeah. I'm doing music. Like, I'm pulling up to the studio and, like, yo, let me see the aux. Yeah. Plugging my shit up and blasting that shit for everybody. And it, it was early on, like, nobody, nobody really knew what I was going to be on. So it hit a lot of people, like, damn, this shit is actually fire. Yeah. And then some people didn't fuck with me. We can talk about it. Yeah. We so, can like, talk about it. Same energy, like. My, just from my brother, just like seeing like he went hard with shit, like 
he was on some Bruce Lee shit. He's still on some Bruce Lee shit. Like, and I was like, all right, I got to really take initiative. I can't just let shit, like my coach used to say, don't just be going through the motions. Yeah. Don't just be doing shit just to do it or yeah. just to get, just so you can finish it. Do it and mean that shit. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. So, you know, after that, and like the shirt started to pop, you think that was like a gateway? Because <clears throat> at that time, where we were transitioning from like Tumblr era to like Instagram era, right? You were one of the pioneers and on the forefront of like that New York streetwear subculture like yeah. right before shit started to get into like Yeezy season and then you was in the the first Yeezy season show mm -hmm. you know talk to us a little bit about like how that came about and then like how you got tapped to be in the show yeah so shit early on like I said I was going to New York going to all the album releases all the signings just trying to catch a celebrity trying to just like I seen everybody before I seen them again and worked with them mm -hmm. I seen them because I was just like People was mobbing in the street to get to get after Kanye, right? And then I'm just like, why y'all following him? Let me just go in front where he about to walk to. Yeah. Hey, Kanye, what's up? I got this shit on camera, too. I'm like 15 yeah. in, like, New York, just that fashion night out and shit. Like, I'm at all the events. This is before it was networking. Yeah. This is like, bro, this is an opportunity. Yeah. Like, you got to seize the moment type shit. I'm going to every event. I'm fucking showing people my shit. I'm wearing my shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm having my shit on head to toe. I made these pants. I made this shirt. I drew on this bucket hat. I took the laces out my Air Forces and drew on these shits too. Like, I'm doing all my shit. Like, man, I'm head to toe, Spencer Lee. Everything I rock, Spencer yeah. Lee. Everything I sell, Spencer Lee. So, like, people started recognizing that. And I, I was kind of like, like I said, I was forcing shit a lot. I was, I was real forceful with my shit because, like, if I, like, I, I believe in myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's I was intense. like, bro, you got to believe in me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you believe in them people and all that whack shit, too, yeah. like, there's good shit going on, but there's a lot of whack shit that y'all yeah. co-signing, y'all got to fuck with me. Because yeah. if not, like, I, I don't know why I fuck with you then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I just remember, like, people used to really play me, though, for real. People used to, because, and I, of course, partly because I'm Asian. The, but you reap the benefits yeah. even more because you, you even went more Because I was like, yo, like, first of all, like, I don't give a fuck what you think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see if you're going to buy this shit or not, yeah. right? Or if you're going to wear it and post it on your gram. Like, I'm on that type of time. Yeah. That's what everybody on right now. But back in 2012, 2011, 2013, that's what I was on. Like, bro, shop my shit out. Yeah. Put my shit on. Wear my shit. You want it for free? All right, here, you take it for free. But you better wear this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want some custom shit? I'm going to make it for you. Are you trying to do a song? Let's do it. Yeah. And then just... That got me, you know what I'm saying, just noticed because I had the energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had the energy about me. And then, you know, I'm not trying to big myself up no, and shit. Bro, but, you like, gotta... like, you know, like, people really did try to, like, play me because I was Asian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, like, I used to act like I didn't care about that shit. But, like, man, whenever somebody talk about you, you like, damn, why would they even talk about me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People used to try to play me for real. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just step my shit up. I'm gonna step my shit up. And then luckily, like, the people who didn't play me were like, became like this with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, my boy Dominique Mills, he was like coming up, he was painting whole murals, like abstract murals on t shirts with oil paint. That's not true. even fabric paint, not even mark, like oil paint. Like, this shit was literally a canvas. I'm like, damn, this shit hard. So, me and him collabed on some shit. Like, I was just collabing with him and we made this fearless shirt. Mm -hmm. It like, had like bleach and paint all over the shit. Bleach and paint, right? And it's like words and shit like that. And you know what I'm saying? You can look it up. It's called The Fearless Teeth by Spencer Lee. But like the next year, Raph Simmons did Bleach and Paint. Supreme did Bleach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People weren't doing Bleach. That's just some old rock star shit, like yeah. old school shit. They weren't doing that shit. Bape did Bleach too. And then I, I did the Chinese button up, like the Bruce Lee shirt. I remember that. And Supreme yeah. did it. Supreme the same did it. The next, shit. the next season. I remember I'm like, that. All right, I'm like, all right, all right. If you ain't bite it from me, they notice it though. You bit it from somebody who bit it from me. Yeah. Because I'm in New York every day. Yeah. I'm in, I'm taking the train every day from New Brunswick to New York. I'm out there. I'm trying to link up with with uh, Dominique Mills. I'm trying to link up with Ass Pizza. I'm trying to link up with with all the New York kids and shit. I'm trying to link up with Virgil. I'm going to all the Ben Trail parties. Mm -hmm. Yo, Virgil. Hey, bro. Hey, fuck with this T-shirt, bro. Fuck with this T-shirt. I'm next up. I'm next up. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he don't, who, who the fuck is this little Asian yeah. kid? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, 
I was foolishly brave. Yeah. I was foolishly brave. I was like, I don't give a fuck who do you, who you are. Like, I fuck with you. Yeah. I got a fucking, like, from that Cruel Summer sign, that Virgil literally signed that shit, that album. I forgot. Like and, and I'm in New York telling him, him I'm yeah and I ended up working with him for 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 the easy season shit, so like people just knew who I was and like my gram I started getting my gram up there using the hashtags and just just trying to meet people and just like having genuine conversation because like I'm myself every yeah. time like I don't care who's watching yeah. like and I remember one time my fucking professor asked me because he thought I wasn't listening mm. he thought I wasn't listening he said he said Spence I said huh he was like are you gonna be would you rather be a blue collar or a white collar when you grow up? I said, no collar. Everybody started laughing in the class, but I was dead ass. He was like, oh, you trying to be Steve Jobs. I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And at this one, I was like, all right, I'm done with college, man. I got too much bars for this shit. <laughs> I, said, I got too much. He, I said, I got too much bars for this shit. Like, and I was like, I'm smart, but not in that way. Yeah. People have different talents. It's different skill sets. Like, like, I was never that good at, like, like, I was never that good at acting like I care about something that I don't care about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna, you're going to be able to see it in my face. You're going to be able to see it in, my, like, in, my, in the results of my work that you have me doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's important. Like, I was in school my second year in college. I was like, yo, like, it's really hard for me. Like, I felt, this was the first time I felt like, am I dumb? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, am I stupid or something? Because I don't get anything on statistics. I don't get anything on this accounting test. I was worried, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I'm used to just listening to what they're saying and all right, I can do that test, I can ace the shit. Yeah. But then like college, that shit got crazy. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And I was like, and I, this is the time where I'm going back and forth. I'm in the club with millionaires and shit. I'm over here hanging out with this person. I just did the Kanye shit. And then I got to go back to my fucking dorm and, and, and do this accounting exam like an hour later. And I'm like, damn. But it's the opportunity cost and you saw you outweighed you know, your negatives and positive if, if I go this way or that way. And you made the right decision for yourself. You took a chance on you. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you can humanize it because a lot of people, again, they're too afraid to take that leap of faith. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yep. Like, you embodied what everyday life had to be. Everybody thinks, everybody sees the, the rainbows and sunshine, but they don't see the, 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 the grind. Like, behind closed doors. Like, even, I was just, like, watching the uh the yay netflix documentary and shit like everybody knows the story but when you get to see it visually like you get to see like yo they wasn't really fucking with him like that it wasn't and now look at him carving out spaces and it's like he's shitting on everybody every chance he get not in a bad way but like that's just him because he believed in himself and you believe in yourself and you understand all right at the end of the day like as long as the i got the right people around me if you're not fucking with me it's because like you're not meant to you, you're not meant to be yeah. in my life you yeah know god saying? god god gonna handle that you know what exactly. i'm saying exactly like i don't if i can't get you to fuck with me within five minutes then i don't need you yeah, you know what i'm saying the right like, door yeah for you. yeah because i remember bro i remember when i started um when i started making music i remember when somebody was like yo like your music tough I heard your song, you trying to be like Tupac, but like, you should stick to making clothes. Like, your clothes is way better, like, you could, and I'm like, oh, that's a compliment, he just looking out, right? Yeah. But at the same time, like, that's when I realized, okay, some people, what they see you as is never going to be what you see yourself, yourself mm -hmm. as. So like, they you box can, you in. Yeah, and this is somebody who I respect saying, telling me this, and I'm like, oh shit, okay, I feel you. And then... Two years later, three years later, music is the biggest thing I've ever did. Mm -hmm. Bigger than anything I've ever done in my life. You know what I'm saying? Get, got me a crib. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Put my boys in a position to make money from music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put the whole game. People that I've been growing up with since third grade, fourth grade, making music with them, like having people involved and shit. And it's like, I just felt like, man, this is bigger than just me. Like, mm -hmm. I represent whoever, whoever feels like whoever feels like me, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I can represent so many things. And it's like, I didn't, I didn't really think twice about this shit. I was like, I'm gonna just do this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it, it really do be like kind of annoying and like sad when people that you really respect don't fuck with you the way you want them to. And it's like, damn, this is a test. Like I gotta see if I can just, now I gotta, oh, like the space they left, they took out, I gotta fill that with my own energy. It's like, 
Cause I used, I was the type of person like I did, I did rely on other people's energy to keep my confidence going. Like keep, like I'm not going nowhere. Like, like I'm not going nowhere without somebody I know with me. Especially if I'm about to go somewhere where it's like a foreign. bunch, of, it's a bunch yeah. of yeah, foreign shit. Like situation, I like I don't, I don't that's not my swag. Yeah. Like I'm a family person. Like yeah. I like having my people around me. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But once that shit start happening, like oh you should do this, people telling you. What's your niche and what's not, and that's that's like damn, that's just kind of like heart wrenching. Yeah. But then the people who do support you, that's when you realize, like, damn, like I gotta keep it's them really, close. It's really, it's really y'all. Yeah, you know it's what I'm us. Yeah. It's just us, and this is how it's gotta be. Like, gotta keep the family close. No, you mentioned that um, you know music was your biggest thing, but is it your favorite thing? So you have, I, I'm not gonna box you, and we're just gonna talk about the most important swim lanes right now, right? Like, you have designing, you got art, you got music. Mm-hmm. Out of those three, you know, what's the most important to you? Music. And then we could music. Yeah. Is that do you think that's a a phase or like you one hundred percent think that out of everything that you've done, that means the most to you, or is that just? Current? I think it means the most to me, and it will always mean the most to me because, okay. like, when has it been an Asian artist? Name the name. That, that's coming through your headphones that you like. And the motherfucker saying some shit. He's speaking. Just Anderson, really? Yeah. And Jim. He's strong. <laughs> Back in the day. You know day. what I'm saying? Like, he's strong. Like, cause like, man, we need more strength, bro. Yeah. Everybody just, we need more strength and we need more hope. And not broke hope, but like hope with action and faith and works. You no, know like what I'm saying? Plant like plant type shit, like some authentic. Yeah, it's yeah. like we need somebody to be planting the seeds. Cause like when I was growing up, bro, there was nobody to look like me. No. Yeah. Right, and that, not that that matters. You don't gotta look like me, but it'd be helping, especially and little you kids. Could see somebody, yeah. and then they could be like, "Oh, I could do that too." Yeah, especially like little kids and like the youth, like even people who aren't Asian. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just the fact that I'm like an outlier, and that like I can make music, I can be in genres. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to play all my other my new shit too later, but like you know what I'm saying? I could do a lot of different shit with the music, and like. It's like I, it's like a direct it's a direct outlet for my heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like fashion is like that too, but it's more abstract. It's like art and fashion is like you kinda gotta dissect it and it's like, you know, when you stand at the museum, it's like, why would he put a fucking dot on the canvas? Like what is think. is this art? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like but the music is like not questionable. Like you hear what I'm saying. It's an instinct. Yeah, it's instinct and it's like I could say shit. I could just say shit and plant a seed in somebody's mind, or I could inspire somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the clothing was cool, was cool for for me because it was like I make people feel good, make people feel fly wearing this shit. But like, you done with it? No, no. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We got the designs in the back. What you got in there? Some clothes and shit that I, I've been drawing on and designing throughout the years. And well, shit. Sh- show us some of the stuff you got. This shit fire. That's the Ten Commandments in Chinese. On That's the front. tough. You know what I'm saying? I had to Google it. And this is like, this is like my swag, like the, um, the flowers and shit. That's tough. My whole thing is like life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I like promoting life, not death. Okay. Like, I, I grew up listening to a lot of reggae and dancehall. I grew up with a lot of Caribbeans and like rosters and shit. Yeah. So like, my whole thing, my whole energy is like, is like life over death. Like, we dealing with things, with food, with people, with situations, with, with circumstances, with thoughts and ideas and manifestations that deal with life. Yeah. Not not the subtraction of life, yeah. but the multiplication of life. So like, I'm just like you see on the back, it says, this says in God we trust, right? And this is like, uh, and this is in Vietnamese. Yeah, that's in Vietnamese. It's a Vietnamese soldier, South Vietnamese soldier, and then you got the animals and they all swimming in the river, and I blended it with the Egypt shit. I think this was like this was like from an artwork from like, I think Amiri Baraka. Okay. Something like that. But I just hand drew all of this. Now, how do you do this at scale? Like, if you say, all right, I'm going to release it. I don't. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, you going to just start making one-on-ones? Or yeah, just... I've been making one-on-ones, but I'm going I'm to I'm get some bread to do it now. Like, I'm going to have some budgets and shit to work with. You could have a whole installation of just shirts that are paintings. Yeah, this is, this is paint right here. And yeah, you so hand-painted it yourself? Yeah, all hand-painted. They're gonna take, they're gonna now, to do you, it, this is just a one-off question because I like I know a few of these, but like, do you know some of these butterflies and moths? Yeah, this one, a moth. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I, like, I know, but um, 
Like you just like did your research or you just saw like inspiration. I just, and yeah, I just saw with the with the butterflies and the moths that I liked and I just drew them. But you know the butterfly and the moth, those are like crazy analogies and like metaphors for life and shit. It's crazy. And they one in the same. One yeah. is just day, one is night. Yeah. I like colors, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like colors and um natural shit, like flowers. Like my mom be gardening every summer and like her garden just be going crazy. So that's like my inspiration for the flowers and shit. But um you know, I, 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 I like a lot of symbolism in what I make. It's like this right here, this shit, that's Vietnam, right? Yeah. But as you zoom out a little bit, it look like Jersey. It do. You see what I'm saying? I thought it was Jersey at first. Yeah, but that's Vietnam. Crazy. And then this, you see, you got the, the keys. The keys, but you got the whole galaxy inside the keys. The music is, is universal. I just start drawing, like, it's like music. Like, you can't really explain, like, how, how I be coming up with this shit, but I just be letting it flow. This is this is for my last thing I did with my um, when I dropped Ariba. When I dropped Ariba, I dropped the whole like collection. Yeah, it. and that track do slap too. That's hand drawn, but it's it's screen printed. And for the, this is the artwork for Young and Humble, the song I got with Mike Will. Yeah. Yeah, the old English. Yeah. Old English font. Yeah, I drew that by hand. I uh, got that screen printed. And this is the Rodney King shit that I was talking about. This is from twenty. This is before everybody started doing custom vintage tees. Let me see. I swear. 20, 2013, 2014. Because I was just making shit that I wanted. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I went, I would go to the thrift stores and try to look for like Tupac tees and like looking for like, I was looking for a Mandela tee. Like, I couldn't find one, so I was I'm making make this shit. shit. Yeah. Yeah. When you make stuff for yourself, there's no inspiration. And people appreciate the quality aspect of that more so than just like, oh, it's a trend, so I'm gonna make a uh, custom mask for COVID. Heron Preston was wearing this shit. Um, Back back in like 2014, like uh, I was like that was, I was really happy about that because you know him mm -hmm. him and Virgil they started that bench real mm -hmm. shit and Heron got his own brand now that shit everywhere mm -hmm. sax shit fire he doing his thing yeah Virgil you know I already know Virgil is going crazy yeah rest in peace rest in peace you was one of the pioneers of that that New York streetwear era before shit really started getting like mainstreamy you yeah. know what I'm saying because like streetwear now is like super mainstream like every it don't matter if you street luxury or like designer like they got they have a subgroup of streetwear that they make. Like even Louis will make. They know to the, how to cater certain shit to. That's because Virgil. Exactly. Virgil is the reason for a lot of this oh, shit. Oh, for sure. Bro. A lot of this shit and it, it, this. These the shits. I love these, yo. Yeah, these Veil this shits. Fire. This is a collab between me and Veil. That shit is fire. Enter the dragon on the front. Crazy. No, this is a game of death on the front. Yeah. What year was this? 2019. Three, four years ago. 2019. Now everybody doing this shit. Yeah. People ask me, am I gonna keep doing it? No, because once everybody do it, I'm doing the next shit. Yeah. Veil, Veil started this wave. To me. No, they definitely did. They was the to first. Us. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, I, I only started seeing it after that, and then obviously they denim go crazy. They was the first, like yeah. not the first, but like they make that stack denim in that specific cut, and now you see a lot of people doing that shit too. I made this hoodie in like five minutes, just to go to the protest. That's tough though. After they, after the police did the bullshit, I'm just trying to do do what I can. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody should, some way, some shape or form. Everybody don't gotta be protesting. Like everybody and supporters and allies to be there. But you know, you also giving people other means of how to support. Cause like everybody has a different role. Yeah. Not everybody is meant to be a pawn, and not everybody's meant to be a king, and not everybody's meant to be a knight. Just because somebody's not protesting on the streets. Don't doesn't mean, mean they're not doing something yeah. to help. Like, some people got to become the politicians and work it out from the inside. Some people got to become, you know what I'm saying? Some people got to, somebody might open a bank. Yeah. An independent or, or a non powers that be bank. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody got different roles to play. And I feel like my role is like, as an artist, I got to just go all the way, like, it's really no other way to put it, like Kanye Pharrell mode with this shit, like. Yeah, but everything. Outs outside of the meticul meticulousness, like, for example, we had a, um, we did a podcast one episode, right, where um, we was talking with my boy Hans, who's who's also like he's he's a rapper or whatever, and uh, well, artist. I don't Hans, like where he from? Um, he from uh, Jersey. Okay. He Asian. Uh, Lakeside Vaga, Hans. He be working with my boy, yeah. I think yeah, I, I think and I, I and all of them and yeah, that's I think, out here. Yeah, I think um, I think he be working with my boy Aaron Lacerna. He do, yeah. Aaron yeah. part of the the collective. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Lacerna. Hard. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. 
like we were just talking about like the music industry and shit like that and how it's important because I tell people all the time like everybody wants to be like a Kanye or a Drake and that's not meant for everybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if you understand your specific lane, like you could be the best in your lane, like a Tyler Creator or a Solange, right? Yeah. And somebody has to come and try and like occupy and take your space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like if people really understood their roles, it would make things a lot better. Like for example, you saying like there are no people who look like you and what you do, right? Yeah. So now you have your own lane where you, your runway is like limitless. Yeah. And you could occupy this space and you could be the, the, the beacon, like the light for people to like try and follow and create those same similar spaces for people that you represent, you feel me? Yeah. So I guess that's a perfect segue into, you know, the music aspect of it, right? So like, when did you flip the switch and you was like, all right, you know, I established my, my I got my feet wet in, in this design game and art game. Now I really want to dabble into music. So I've been making music since 20, well, my, I made my first song in 2009. Okay. Um, in my boy Mantra's crib. And it was called, it was called Spaceman Spence. Okay. Spaceman, cause we was rocking BBC. Yeah, for real, yeah, for yeah, real. Spaceman shit. Spence. Young space man got 46 bitches. Then I hit your bitch, now I got 47. Young space man, go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some, just some like, yeah. some little kid shit. Yeah. But that was a flow. Cause people use that flow still. And then, you know, I, I was like, I was playing with it in high school. Um, me and my, me and my teammates um, from the track team, Sabang. Uh, Kakuyan, aka Lee, um, Mark Kim. Mark you know, Kim. We was in the basement after, after practice. We would go to Kakuyan's house. Mm. His dad would train us in the weight room, and then after that, we would be locked in in the studio because okay. uh, Kakuyan was making music. He like a musical genius. Okay. So he was making beats and shit, and we was all rapping on them, and you know what I'm saying, just making songs. But I didn't start taking it serious until my boy Chino passed away. Yeah. So my boy Chino, he rest in peace. yeah, rest in peace, long live the goat. Chino was 2000, class of 2011, I'm class of 2013, and I grew up just like in the neighborhood in the Society Hill and shit, like looking up to him and and uh, my my man Malik, his older brother yeah. Steven, they was like the first rappers that I knew about in the town. Steven and, and uh, yeah, Stone and Steve and Chino, Lil Z the Prodigy, and they would be rapping like every day I would go to Malik house, Cash, 732 Cash as y'all be knowing him as. Mm -hmm. So I would go to his house and then I would be over there and they'd be like on nice kicks and soul collector, which when That's it was called shit. in style ISS. shoes, yeah, ISS, ISS baby, and they was showing like us the Jordans and shit, the Aqua Eights and mm -hmm. all the shit, the military fours is about to come out, and I'm just like, damn, I wish I could get these shits, and then like they would be just recording songs and shit sometime when I'd be over there and like it was like the flyers. Mm -hmm. So when he passed away, like it was on some like damn, that I was shit like, was crazy. damn, cause he was like the best rapper to me. Him and Steve was like the best rappers. Them, Steve, they had this group called E4P mm -hmm. um, with B Man, Vader, um, you know what I'm saying? And uh Stone and Steve and Chino, they was rapping all the time. Like they was really locked in, like recording themselves and everything in the basement. Yeah. And I, I looked up to these guys like for the fashion, for everything. Me and Malik in the same class, we just started taking that shit serious. And then I, I did a song with Malik called Dirty Jersey. That's my shit. Drop that shit. Yeah, yeah that shit. Fire. Drop that, that shit in 2016. What's the word? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drop that shit in 2016. First song that I did that hit a million views. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's my shit, shit. That shit like at three now. But, you know, and that's with my boy who I grew up with. Yeah. Like, Steve and Chino was like the older version of me and Malik. I still remember the video. You shot that at the basketball court. Yeah, free yeah. just tall, tall my, Shout out my boy Max. <laughs> when somebody loves me, I feel it for real. Yeah. I appreciate the love for real. I always appreciate the love. But when somebody don't like me, the little kid in me. You feel it too. I'm still a little kid and I'm still conflicted. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Libra. Yeah. I don't really believe in this shit <laughs> to, to the fullest, but like, you know, I'm a Libra, you know, to sum it up, like, shit be pulling me in different directions because in a perfect world, I would like everybody to fuck with me. I would like everybody to get along, but it's we, not like that. we live on earth. Yeah. We're not in heaven yet. We live on earth. Most self agenda place in the world. Yeah, we, this, shit, this shit is crazy. So like, you know, I do be feeling this shit. I be nervous like every time. It don't matter if I'm about to perform for, for two people or a thousand people. I'm the same amount of nervous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I care. Yeah. I care so much about this shit that I don't care at all. 
so how you calm yourself down and and still walk blindly into like fuck it, I'm gonna just go do this. Man, I just be. <laughs> I feel that though. You know what I'm saying and just, you know what I'm saying, just get up in here in this mode, right? Just like uh. tap in, but yeah, like it's really no way. Yeah. You got to just go through that shit. You got to. Like even like when I when like I used to run track, right? Like I got nervous, mm. like super fucking nervous, like. I'm like shaking this shit before I'm about to like jump over this bar. Yeah. And it's like, you only get three tries and shit. It's like, man, like, I'm like really shaking this yeah. shit. I'm just always been, I've always been a nervous person, but like I've learned to, I've learned to just, boom, say a little prayer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Meditate real quick and then shit will be good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I do be a nervous because even like when I was younger, like, oh, Spencer, uh, dance. Do the dance you was doing for your auntie and uncle. Like, <laughs> like do the do the do the song that you was doing. Like, what's that song you were singing, right? And this is like, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I don't want to. But like, I got over it because I know, like, all right, this shit bigger than me and my mm. comfort zone. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than my comfort. It's bigger than, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm thinking because I have a job to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? God gave me something to spread it, right? And I can't spread it if I'm always introverted. Yeah. I'm an introvert, but I've learned to, you know what I'm saying? Adapt. I've yeah. learned to adapt because I know who I, I don't, I'm not gonna say I know who I am, right? but like. You have a I know what I'm. Yeah, you. I know what I'm capable of and I know what I should be doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what I should be doing is sharing my, sharing my shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like. How you feel about, you know, the, the artistry from your your rookie album to your sophomore album and that transition because it's like it's two different kind of sounds you know what you're I'm talking saying? about the 10 12 shit? yeah 10 12 yeah that's a that that wasn't even an album that was like um that was like i had to drop four songs on yeah. my birthday like a smaller ep type yeah a small ep and then i just added those three just for streaming purposes because yeah. like oh this shit kind of sound like a project yeah. but i feel like the first one um i made that shit from the ages of 18 to 19. Okay. Right? That's when I thought I knew what was going on, but I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew what was going on, but I was just like, just moving, moving, moving kind of sloppy. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I was, I was honest. That's really what I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? I'm really thinking about shit. And the sound was like, it was kind of dark. It was more dark mm -hmm. than, um, like the beats was dark, but I wasn't like on no emo emo shit. Like maybe one song as a tribute, you know what I'm saying, was like some sad shit. But you know, that compared to the the next few songs after that, it was more like the next few songs was more experimental. Like some of the songs don't got a hook. Yeah. Some of them got. Some of them I got like three verses. They got beat switch ups. You know what I'm saying? But that was really just like me bending different genres and shit. Like fucking with different producers and. Yeah. But to me, like. When I make this shit, I always just try to do something different every time, like, cause I'm making shit every day and I'm just picking songs out and putting it together. What's that process and that maturation like look like? Cause we don't know, you know, mm -hmm. behind closed doors, that growth and what really went into that. Like you could have went dark and like, yo, I had a depressive state. I was actually, I did deal with depression. Um, after I dropped my first one, um, I kind of fell into a habit of like, just like self-sabotage kind of. Okay. But just like thinking I didn't deserve shit or thinking I deserve shit that I didn't mm. and thinking I don't deserve shit that I did have. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just kind of like a weird place for me. I was like, I wasn't taking care of my body like that. I wasn't really working out and I wasn't really like eating right. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was fucking smoking backwoods and shit like yeah. that a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I would have moments where like opportunities would pass me by because I'd be too fucking, just too fucking like. Strung out. Like just, just not even strung out, like, just like in my head okay. as opposed to in the moment. Yeah. And like, um, that was like 2017, like 18. And then um, that was a phase. So in the beginning of 2018, my appendix had burst. Sorry to that. It was in, I was in Miami. I was in a club. Yeah. And then like I had hit the gas in the club with my boy, and I'm just like, yo, so much. I feel crazy. Like, I'm starting, I had started having chills and shit. 
Then, like, I'm walking out. I'm like, yo, I got to leave. I start creasing. I'm like, damn, this shit hurt. Yeah. And then I'm like, something in my head just said appendix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what an appendix is, but I looked it up. It's like pain on the right lower side of the abdomen. I'm like, damn, this really might be it. So I got, I got in the car. I drove to my dad's house. I'm like barely looking over the windshield. This shit was dangerous, but I'm like, I'm not calling the Man, fucking the ambulance. Hospital. I, I, yeah, my dad took me. Right. I drove to my dad's house because I ain't know what hospital. I'm like, I don't yeah, know. I ain't never just, go to the hospital for no shit like this. Yeah. I'm like, damn, this shit hurt, but it really hurt. Like I'm screaming while driving, like ah, <laughs> fuck, like <laughs> driving the car, like this shit hurt. And then like I had to get surgery and shit that night, and that shit really like sat me down. I was like, damn, like I need to take care of myself. Yeah, and I need absolutely. to get right with God. Your body is the most important art form, and if you're not. Real. If you're not putting the same effort that you're doing into your work into your body, it, like shit don't align for real. Yeah, for real. Because people will people will have all these problems manifesting outside of their life, and they they fail to look internally. Just the number one canvas yeah. right here first. What you eat, what you put inside, you feel better. You got the endorphins. Like everything clicks. You know what I'm saying? So I feel you on that 100. Yeah. percent Yeah, that's that's that was the turning point for me. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take care of myself. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat natural foods like the Rastas. I'm going to goddamn say what I mean and mean what I say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to study the laws of the universe. I'm going to open that good book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pray more. And then I started doing that shit. I had dropped that little EP. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of, that's like one of my biggest songs on there. Word of Mouth is on there. And shit like that. That's what I'm saying. You felt like you felt the maturity of it. But like, that's, I actually appreciate that because like a lot of people, like, they judge people off of, like, oh, is, is it better than a previous project? And it's, like, completely different sound. Like, you can't yeah. really have the same gauge yeah. and, and, and way you, you think, of, think about it. But sometimes it don't even be, like, the music. It really just be, like, the shit that's going on in your life. And that's, that's crazy that you said that. You know yeah, what I'm it was a lot going on, bro. And then, like, two months after I got, no, a month after I got out of the hospital, mind you, when I got out of the hospital, I was, like, I lost like 20 pounds. Yeah, I know how that shit is. Because I wasn't eating that shit in the yeah. hospital. I'm not eating that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was already starting my journey before my shit bursted. I was starting my journey to go have a more alkaline diet, yeah. studying Dr. Sebi, studying, um, listening to Dick Gregory and shit like that, and them talking about this shit. I'm like, man, maybe I should. Bruce Lee even with the, with the working out shit. And I was like, man, maybe I need to be more spiritually in tune. Yeah. And then a month later, after I got out of the hospital, I got to go to fucking South by Southwest to so open up for Ray Schremer and Mike Will and shit, mm. performing in front of all these people. I'm wearing all white, all white, clean outfits, Stone Island pants, reflective bapes from like 05, 06. But underneath, my whole body had rashes. Damn. Everywhere. Mm. You know, they were pumping me up with drugs and all this shit in the, in the hospital, antibiotics, you should shit, be whatever. reacting to it. Yeah. But I had eczema my whole life, and it was like the worst at that point okay. because of what I was eating. So. Then I switched my diet, studied, did my shit, did my research, experimented on myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, what can I eat? What can I not eat? Yeah. I had to start from nothing. But you know what I'm saying? Either way, people don't know that shit was going on. I'm in the shower, shit burning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and this is, I'm somebody who's supposed to be selling my image, right? Yeah. Selling literally the artistic form of what I do to my body, what I put on it, how I take care of it, how I do my hair, what everything. You know what I'm saying? That's supposed to be me, right? I'm known for this. I'm known for being fly fresh. Meanwhile, I can't even be comfortable in my own skin. Exactly. Literally. So then I was like, yo, okay, I got to do internal work. Mm -hmm. Like this shit deeper. This is a spiritual battle that I have to that I go through. This is deeper than just money. Yeah. This is deeper than just trying to be a rapper or trying to be an artist or a singer or whatever. I like, I got to get right with myself. So that shit took a while, but I figured it out. No, no drugs, no prescriptions. No doctors, no none of that shit. Just straight me and my mom in the kitchen, figuring this shit out, doing research, studying Dr. Sebi, going on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, doing that shit, and it worked, you know what I'm saying? And like that to me was just like, damn, like I've been battling that shit my whole life, on and off, having to put, telling doctors, like going to doctors and shit, doctors are like, yo, you gotta put this cream on you and yeah. the steroids and shit. I'm like, I ain't want that shit in my bloodstream. In my opinion, I don't know, you can tell me if I'm wrong, you have more of a mental strain on the music because day in and day out, you got to feel like you got to perform for people. 
you got to go in the booth, like, you could be sick, you know what I'm saying, like, you have waste, like, there's different elements that kind of affect your work, whereas, like, designing, it's like, yeah, I might, today I don't feel like doing it, but tomorrow I could design and do the same thing by just getting a, a good night's sleep, you know what I'm saying, so I think it's important to compare and contrast, like, when you, where you was at, like, with designing versus... The music. Yeah, the music a whole different beast. I can imagine. But also with the designing, like, the way I did that shit, like, I had put in my 10,000 hours mm -hmm. since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had put in those hours because I was drawing all the time and mm -hmm. I was making shit. Like, I was always doing, I was always using using the pencil. Mm -hmm. With the music shit, it's like I had to lock in harder because I started that a little later than I started drawing. And it was like, new. I started with lyrics. Yeah. Lyrics was never that hard for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was mostly like the melodies and like the flows and shit. Cause I remember I, I did a song with that shirt. I was talking about the Fearless shirt. It was it had a music video. This shit was so bad. The music was the song was ass, but like the you know what I'm saying. I tried. Mm -hmm. I tried to picture the complex. Like, yo, I'm dropping the shirt and to come with a song. I'm wearing the shirt in the video. Like, this shit hot. Mm -hmm. It was like, yo, we fuck with this shirt, but the, we're not gonna post the song. I'm like, man, don't fucking post nothing then. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it don't go with the full plan. We don't that post nothing, man. It's just not yeah. the vision. But then, guess what? I got to do the same shit. Now I got three million views. I'm going to wear the shit I made in the, in the video, just like I did back then. I'm going to put this shit on. I'm going to rap about what this shirt... I'm going to rap about what I'm, what I'm feeling while I'm wearing this shirt that I made. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to do what I thought it would do back then. But... I just had to wait a few years until I got more mature yeah. and refined my skills as an artist. So like that should be working out. Like I'ma have my way. Yeah. If I really want it, I'ma have my way. Cause like, like the shit is the same to me. Everything is the same. Like how I do one thing, that's how I do everything. Like if I wanna, if I wanna like make make if I wanna make clothes, I know I gotta just like when I'm making clothes, I just let that shit flow. Mm -hmm. I freestyle on on the shirt. Right? Then I'm like, okay, I know for the next one I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna take this thing I did here, do it different. Same thing with the with the with the music. I listen to the beat, that's the pe that's the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I say something on the beat, that's the words. That's mm -hmm. that's the that's the paint. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Or even if it's just chords and shit, and I'm just making ideas on ideas on ideas. But like I'm not just like I'm not I'm trying because like with the art, you gotta think less yeah. and feel more. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause the um, the music and the art, that shit like the same. I I go about it the same way. I just freestyle and then refine it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, but that's the shit. Like I, I like to hear the process. Like yeah. That, that coding, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I got like I got the I got the recipe from 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 hanging out with uh, from well watching Tino mm -hmm. and watching Steve when I was a kid. Like, oh, these guys in here every day. That's like a rule of this shit. Like you got to be making music every day, and then. Um, when I met Mike Will and Sway Lee and Ray Shermer, how, how did that happen though? So I was actually yeah, gonna ask yeah, you yeah. about that because yeah, I know so you. my I boy know. Max, my boy Max, who be doing all my, my videos, videos, he went to my high school. Okay. He's like a legend yeah. in Franklin High School. He was like the first person to go from the video program with Mr. Penix. Shout out Mr. Penix, and he taught us how to like make videos, music videos, movies. Took that camera, did a lot of shit with it. You know what I'm saying? Made money with it. He did all my music videos. He was shooting for uh, Ray Shremmer at the time. And he was like, yo, come to the video, act like you the stylist. You know what I'm saying? Act like you the stylist and just like, just get in the area, get in the mix, put them in the clothes you're making. So I met them there and I chopped it up with them. You know what I'm saying? Shrim life. Yeah, and like <laughs> what I said before, if I can't get you to fuck with me in five minutes, then I don't need to fuck with you. Yeah. It was fuck with me in one minute, cause. I'm they a fan. They co-signing the shit out of you too. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still, I'm, yeah, you, yeah. yeah, I'm a fan of Mike Will. I'm a fan of Sway Lee and Jimmy. I like what y'all do. You know what I'm saying? Y'all doing something that align with what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yo, this is what I do. These are my clothes. Like I make music and all that shit. They didn't even know I made music at the time. Yeah. And then like from just hanging out with them, they, Mike was like, hey man, you got to be with the gang. Like you got to just be with the squad. You too. You produce some of your shit too, right? Yeah. 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 So Mike, Mike was taking me around and then. Being in the studio with them, and I, I saw the process like, yo, because I used to like, like what I was saying before, I used to try to rap like pop. I used to, I used to like really just go only on boom bap beats and shit like that, and like write all my shit on a notebook. But then I saw them, they're like, I oh, we just go in the booth and just vibe. Yeah. 
And I'm like, man, how you be doing the melodies like that? Because some shits do slide. Yeah, I'm like, how you be doing the melodies? I'm like, and he's like, bro, the beat gonna tell you what to do. Just go in. And I'm like, all right. So I started trying this shit. Then I started being able to come up with melodies. Mm -hmm. It took a while, but, you know, when you do this shit every day and you just make hundreds and hundreds of hooks and hundreds of verses and experiment, because like I said, I always try to do something different, challenge myself. You're going to come up with some results. You know what I'm saying? You put the work in, you're going to come with results. That's but tough. You can't just expect, like, do 10 songs and then them 10 going to be fucking college dropout. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You it's gotta, never that easy. It's never that easy. At anything. Yeah. People think that you could just step into the shit and then just because you got the look. One, one take. No, nah, you got to really be hard. And that's yeah. what Mike would say. He's like, you got to really be hard. You got to just keep making music. Just go hard. Because you can't be a gimmick. Yeah. You got to be actually nice, especially if you're Asian. Because you're doing something unprecedented. You got to have the quality. You got a stigma before you even start rapping, bro. Yeah, and it's even like, I don't even, like, I'm just like, as an artist in general, I'm just like, yeah, like, I like when people like what my work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hate when people be like, hey, yo, bro, like, hey, you got the look. You got the look. You got the look. But I'm like, but you don't look at music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not about that. Yeah, like, I see better with my eyes closed when it comes to music. Because I'm like, I'm like, all right. It's, it's like, it's an invisible force. It's like, really, it's really like magic. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like wizardry. So, you know, I learned, I learned by just like putting in the work and just really trying to be better. Like, I, my main goal all the time is to be better. For sure. Like, I always want to be better. Of like, every day. I always want to be better. So that process just came about like that. I was just, I just picked up a lot of games, just being blessed, mm -hmm. fortunate to have an abundance of inspiring people around me. You know what I'm saying? Even like, even like, um, just even getting to work with Virgil that one time, like, yeah. like I remember I was like, man, I'm looking at this man. He putting me in the 750 booths yeah. before anybody saw them. Yeah. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. They dressing me, him and Kanye dressing me and shit. And I'm like, I know this is a stepping stone, right? But just in the moment, I'm just like, yo, I used to fucking chase you around New York City telling you that I'm going to be next. And now you're here. And now I'm right here in 2015. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just just from being, just from following following my heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, he continued showing me love. You know what I'm saying? Continued showing me love, like, you know what I'm saying? I used to, I was sending him my music and shit. He was like, yo. Give you like, feedback yeah, bro, and this shit. This shit fucking crazy. Like, yo, you, like, bro, you got some shit, da, da, da. Like, and just shit like that, especially when it's people you look up to, like, yeah. that love always stick. It's a forever moment. You yeah. Know, and just, you build relationships. Yeah, having, having those, having those, those inspiring people in your life, like even my mom, you know what I'm saying? I take a village. To start with, yeah. Start with the with even the my parents. mom, like she she know all my music, all my lyrics. That's like that's like the best though. Yeah, like, she know all my lyrics. She know all my music. She know everything I be everything. Like my mom's like, she's like, she's just she's the source. You know what I'm saying? I feel that. Cause my my parents, man, they they my dad my dad was sick at drawing too, mm -hmm. like crazy. I used to go, I used to ask him to draw me pictures when I was a little kid, like, hey, can you draw Wolverine? Like, and he would just do it. He would just do it, like, real quick. That's and tough. That's how I got nice at drawing from watching my dad, like, how he was drawing. Like, the way I draw is like how my dad draw. And then my, my mom, like, the way she dresses, like, how I start dressing. It's crazy how you picked shit up. Yeah, because my mom was super into, like, fashion and shit like that. Yeah. She was just fly. Like, she used to work at Canal Jeans before it became Bloomingdale's and Soho uh -huh. and shit like that. And my dad from Brooklyn. Used to do photography and art, um, so I just got I got the swag from them, and then my brother and sister put you me had on the, the music. blueprint. You just put the pages together. Yeah, you know like what I mean? you know, I was blessed to have like a supportive, tight family. It always starts with the village and the community. Sometimes I was like too turnt. Yeah, I was too turnt for my own good, and I thought like, oh, I deserve to be. I deserve to be the real, priority humble, here. Humble you Everywhere. real quick. Yeah, and then it was like, damn, like. I, damn, I can't just make 50 songs. I gotta make 200 yeah. before I even drop this shit because yeah. I know this ain't the best work I could do right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that that just carried over. But me being overconfident helped me get over like any barriers that were supposed to be in my way. Because I, I just felt like I was a giant. Yeah. Right? I still feel like I'm a giant. I'm just stepping over shit. Like, uh, ah, stepping on shit. But that's how that's how I feel. That's how I was raised to feel like. You know what I'm saying? So, what's next for Spencer Lee then? For the music, for what you want to do? So 
So what's next for me is this album. So I got this album done. You know what I'm saying? I have an abundance of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just signed a deal. Oh, congratulations. It, me, it's a deal between me, Can Mike. Can you talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Me, Mike Will, and 88 Rising. Okay. 88 Rising, they, they like fuck with the Asians. Okay. Heavy. You know what I'm saying? They, they Asian owned, operated. I get to keep my music. You know what I'm saying? Need your master. Do what clothes. I do. You know what I'm saying? Have this deal with Mike Will and 88 Rising. And like, you just trying to build that, that America Asia link. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Keep on building with the people. And like, creative assets, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's important to me. Like, I'm not about to just, it's really hard for me to just like sign something and just be like, yo, like, Hand it here over. you go, stranger. Yeah. yeah. Take care of me, stranger. Yeah. Like, here goes a piece of my heart, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So if I'm gonna break bread, it's gonna be with Mike Will, who put me on yeah. to the music shit, you know what I'm saying? Mike Will, 88, they doing shit for the Asians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mike Will in, in 88 and Shotta Spence, that's like, that's a, like a never before seen thing, like, cause we we doing it in a tasteful way. Yeah. We doing it in a tasteful way. We not we not all up in the camera trying to be fucking harder than the next man and shit like that. We doing this shit tastefully. Focus on the art. I love that. So you know the music is gonna be dynamic. It's, it's got a lot of live music, live sound. You know what I'm saying? Different rhythms, different beats. You know, um, but you know, for me, it's always about like. The quality of the music, for sure, it has you know to be. Because I like, I like, I love music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Music is, it's I'm in love with music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I can't just put out no shit that's just like cookie cutter. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it's it's gonna be dope though. It's I definitely fire. I'm gonna play y'all some shit too. Definitely. I meant to say this earlier. Always rock your friend's shit. Rock your shit. Like you can support your designers and brands and shit, but it's so so important to rock all your shit. Outside of that though, bro. Wanted to say I appreciate you. Thank you for being on the show with us. Love, bro. Um, Love. Just one last closing statement. You know what you want to tell people who are listening to you, who who started in the same kind of like, you know, shoes or like facing the same type of challenges and just trying to break through. You know what I'm saying? They just, they just need a little bit of just like oomph to get there or a match to start shit. Find, find out what it is you love to do and focus on that. Find your purpose in life. What, what can you do that you enjoy that can sustain your spirit, that it feels right, and that you can be of service to people? And if you're in that zone, that, that, that sweet spot of what you're doing, keep going with that shit. And also, you don't have to have everything planned out. Mm. Like, you don't have to have everything premeditated. You don't have to have everything figured out. You don't have to know where you're going to go. Just the direction, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You don't have to know exactly what you're going to do because you got to leave a little room for God to work. Yeah. So have faith in God. God's going to come through and color in. Color in. You just draw the lines, he's going to color that shit in for you. And just, just you know what I'm saying, stay... Stay, stay in that zone. Like, what's my purpose? You know what I'm saying? Like, not just what I'm, what's cool, but what's my purpose in there? Just stay in that, stay prayed up, and you will make it. You just gotta believe and manifest that shit. Bless, love that. Take care of your body for real. That's the most important. Take canvas. care of your body. Drink that water. Eat them fruits and vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Look up Dr. Sebi. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna push nothing on nobody, but appreciate you, dog. Not for real. Much love. I wish you nothing, but. The utmost success, you know, I'm gonna be following, we'll be following, obviously, supporting yeah. and shit. And thank then, you, uh, bro. Hey, thank you for having me on this shit. Cause, like, man, it's early, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's still early. Like, people don't be knowing who I am. People don't know who I am yet. But it so, matters, like, though. Yeah. Every I appreciate step, this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, appreciate you. Let's go listen to some of the tracks, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Fuck sir. Yeah, man. <laughs>